Welcome to Learn Collective Podcast. Uh, we're so glad that you're here with us. Um, yeah. We're back. We're back. <laughs> Definitely. We did want to give you guys a heads up that we are going to take a break in a couple weeks. So over like the Christmas time, um, we're taking like a two or three week break from the podcast just because we need some rest yeah. and maybe it will encourage you to take some rest. <laughs> So um, just so you know, we'll give you a heads up about that again, but we will be back in the new year, I think on the 4th or the 11th, I can't remember, of January. Yeah, one, one of them. those days. Um, but anyways, that's what we will be doing. But before we do that, we thought we would chat a little bit about, because some of you who have a creative business may be thinking about the new year, um, mm. or you're planning something like that um, when the new year starts, and you may be thinking about like what you want to start offering, or products, or just thinking about that. Mm -hmm. um, and so we thought we'd chat about what do you do when you have a product that's been really successful and um, maybe it's taken a downturn or maybe it hasn't. Maybe it's been mm -hmm. successful year after year after year. However, you feel like you would like to either make like a twist on it or try something new on it. And that feels really risky when something has been successful and, and frankly has brought an mm -hmm. income for your business. Um, and yeah. so we thought we would talk about it because this is something in real time that we have been dealing with. Um, mm -hmm. Or there may be an external factor that makes you, um, forces you have in many think, ways yeah. that you have to rethink it. Mm -hmm. um, and that is what has happened to us. And so we often learn very well from like having pr real practical examples of somebody in their business. And mm -hmm. so we thought we would just walk you through a practical example of something for us recently yeah. and realizing just because you change a successful product doesn't mean like you know, it, it will be okay <laughs> yeah i mean i think again it's it's you know in your business you might have some winners and you some losers but sometimes those winners eventually kind of fade out a little bit mm -hmm. over time um, they might over time and things like that and so i think again it's like that, that that's still a really good idea like that product's is still a really good thing but can you rethink it can you challenge yourself to rethink it think of it in a new way um that might grab some new audience or whatever and so i think yeah. that that's Partly too, but also like Maya said too, we had some external issues and things that are happening that, you know, kind of not necessarily forced us to think of uh, certain products in a new way, but yeah, it did, I guess. It did. Yeah, so, <laughs> so um, an example of things that might make you think, um, you know, you maybe it's that you have this really successful, I know this happened to some people that we're friends with um, that sell creative products that they hand paint on ornaments. Hmm. Um, and so last Christmas, there was a supply issue. They couldn't get the ornaments mm. to even paint them. And so that would have been their like best seller during Christmas time. Um, and I'm talking like like baubles and stuff like that. Um, so that's one example of something that like that could happen. Um, so a supply issue mm -hmm. could be the issue of actually getting the things that you need. Um, an issue that almost everyone we know that sells like a physical product that has run into since COVID is shipping issues. Sure. Um, it could be things are getting just getting lost. It could be how long it's taking. It could be, um, you know, I know a bunch of people like the shipping issue of things being stuck in the canal and stuff like that. Oh gosh, yeah. Um, and things being pushed back and that was some artists we follow, they had books that were coming out and they were all in that canal, you know, stuck in it. Um, it could be anything like that. Um, you know, here in the UK, um, and some other places in Europe too, but a lot in the UK, at least this Christmas season, um, there is a lot of postal strikes happening. So the post office is just shut down completely. Mm -hmm. um, you can't get things out. You can't get things delivered. They're not delivering anything. Mm -hmm. And that then obviously keeps pushing back more and more and more things, especially if you're shipping internationally, mm -hmm. um, but even within the UK. Yeah. And so that is all some things that may possibly affecting it could be the amount of time you have now it could be you in a um, <clears throat> different season of life and you don't have as much time to sit there and like hand paint things um, I'm just using that as an example this applies to whatever mm -hmm. um, you may be selling and everything like that there is um, a couple places that like I've shipped stuff from the states um, before of like things that we really like from the states and they're no longer shipping internationally because they've made the decision right. it's either too expensive yeah. or it's too time consuming and then vice versa <laughs> there's another artist we follow who have been wanting to get his stuff for a while and it's been so expensive to order from him and now he is shipping internationally mm -hmm. for a cheaper option and so it goes both ways yeah. and so for us um, the product that we thought we use and as an example is our advent calendar. Yep. 
do you want to explain what our advent calendar has been in the past so people kind of like yeah so we currently from? offer a mm-hmm. advent calendar that well what we did offer. in the past yeah. um was a set of cards that you would get and that you can display in your house you could you know keep them as a um just like a uh you know a deck that's on like the table or whatever i think um and then so on one side there is a kind of one reading prompt and then on the other side there's an activity that you can do as a family and so basically uh yeah so it's always been like a kind of, kind of like a, a stack or a deck of cards like 25 um, cards of for, that you would yeah. use each for each advent season um and things like that and so because of that um this year and there's lots of shipping issues and lots of different things we've kind of thought of we had to think of it in a different way you know because we weren't sure even if we had all these products ready to go and all that kind of stuff that we would be able to ship them and get to them to people in time for December the advent 1st, season for december 1st and so because of that we had to kind of start to rethink like are we even going to offer this product um or do we need to think of it in a new way and so that's kind of what happened and it has been a product that's been super popular yeah. and so i think it was hard to think through of like uh, I mean, frankly, if you if you've hit a season where it's been super stressful for a successful product that you offer, you're always going to rethink it. And so, immediately last year after Christmas time, we we're like, "What are we going to do next year with this?" Because mm. this was really stressful. Yeah. Um, it was really stressful in meaning that, like, even though we were selling it in October, so people had plenty of chance. Any seasonal things, this tends to happen in your yeah. customer base. Even though we were like educating people, order ahead of time so that you get it for December 1st when our advent calendar starts and that kind of thing. You always have someone that orders on November 30th from another country who thinks they're going to get it the next day because we we live in a world where everyone's used to Amazon. Um, So they're used to that quick turnaround, prime, next day. I mean, I'm used to it. And so that is a problem then for some of us that don't, we can't do that, um, you know, and that kind of thing. And international shipping does not work like that. And so that kind of thing. Um, And so it was a real struggle last year. We not only, but then even for people who did order a month ahead, some of them didn't get it until December, in the middle of December. Um, yeah. And that was really frustrating. And so we even had to be creative in that, in how we provided um, those people who had ordered with yeah, those activities true. to do, mm-hmm. which is what then made us think of how we were going to offer it this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this year we've made the switch. Instead of having a physical product, Pat redesigned it um, to make it smaller and to make it something that you can print at home and cut them out. I should have brought these things as examples for you to yeah, watch on that YouTube. That would be helpful. That would have been helpful, but that's all right. <laughs> um, to print them out, fold, and then use them. So not that they were like these um, kind of like square square cards before. About three and a half by three and a half, yeah. four inch, four inch by four. And Those were the cards. Now they're about two and a half by two and a half, and they're like little like table tent cards. So that cards you don't that have you to can, print double-sided because yeah. we realized that would be really complicated. So now it's a printable thing. Um, we also know this year, again, this is where you pay attention to your customers and stuff like that. A lot of our customers who have bought advent calendars in the past um, aren't the same people that necessarily buy stuff from us the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, and so some people, we know money is really tight this year um, and everything with inflation and everything else that is going on right now, um, no matter where you are at, actually. And so we wanted to offer it at a little bit lower of a price, too. Um, but then that meant we needed to find a way for us not to have the cost of like all the printing and the shipping and things like that that add up in the product. And so we offer it currently um, as a download that you can print from home and that kind of stuff. And so we made that switch from this product that has always been- A physical, actual product. A physical, actual product that did sell really well. um, Mm -hmm. And that kind of thing um, has always been something at the end of the year that we can almost, I mean, frankly, it has been something we can guarantee we'll have at least this many sales and it's gone up every year Mm -hmm. Um, and that kind of thing to switching it completely. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so that is scary to do. So if you are in a business that you're like, yeah, I do have this successful product and I think I would like to change it. It's scary. I mean, we did, I think I had a bit of a wobble at the first week in November. I'm like, oh, maybe we should be offering this as a physical product. Um, because we had a couple people contacting us saying, you know, I can't seem to find that one. I'm like, actually, it's this one now. You we, and they mm-hmm. were fine with it, um, but you do you do question it. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have to make you have to make decisions that are going to be better for your business in the end. Um, 
And I think it probably actually hurt, like, and everyone was so understanding, actually, of, like, the shipping issues and things like that. Yeah, but, but, but you can always look at it ahead of time and know, I foresee this is going to happen. We know mm. that they're telling us they're going to be, They now they have changed it the last minute sometimes, there are going to be possible um, Royal Mail strikes, which means either we need to find a different shipping carrier, which usually means it's more expensive, and then is that cost effective? Um, or we need to rethink how we're offering some things. We have done the same with our Christmas cards. Our Christmas cards, we're not shipping physical Christmas cards. Um, people can get them on some different websites, but on our website, um, it's downloads that people can print at home, or we have like a printing vendor that we recommend and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it took a bit of work to yeah, there's have always, that new Yeah, there's format. always kind of a front end uh, side of that. But at the same time, like, again, <laughs> we're not having to deal with printing costs. We're not uh dealing with the amount of time it takes us to put the products together and to um you know the presentation of them and then we don't have to pay for the boxes that they're shipping out in mm -hmm. and then paying for the actual shipping so there's lots of things that were um now because of the new um, product that it's a printable download that you can have at home um that you print at home it, it takes a lot of those extra costs out of the way and so that's why we can then bring down the cost for the for the end user mm -hmm. um, which mm -hmm. is really nice and really helpful and so um so again it yeah it definitely was hard because again you want to i think a lot of times with certain types of products you want to keep the integrity of the product um and you don't want um to lose the the uniqueness about it and all that kind of stuff um but with this i think we felt confident that going it and, and tweaking it and changing it it doesn't lose it doesn't lose the the heart behind it and so i think that that's why it was like a big yeah. big okay for us to do that another thing that can happen with a successful product is that um i mean i think there's everyone's done something that's similar probably when you come up with an idea for a product but sometimes yours for whatever reason reason like just strikes a different chord with people and mm. so you may have a quote unquote like unique idea um and then it like hits really big for a season or for a year or two or something like that. And then quickly what tends to happen is other people see what you're doing and they're like, mm. Oh, I should offer something kind of like that. And yeah. so then it becomes more of a saturated market maybe than it was before. That is for sure happened with us on mm -hmm. things. Um, they're not even maybe directly copying you, but they're attempting to do something similar. Yeah. And it may be because all of a sudden big box, big box stores are offering something similar too, because they've picked up on it. Um, whatever it may be. And so you may have to rethink that successful product because now you're in a really saturated market and people aren't finding you as much where before mm. you were one of a few that was offering that right. um, in that unique way and that kind of thing. And it, that is very difficult in this day, day and age. Like um, if you want a Christmas candle that smells nice, you're going <laughs> to find mm. so many. And so how can you bring that down into more of a niche, niche, whatever, whichever <laughs> way you say it? Um, kind of thing of you know like i specifically this year was looking for christmas candles that were more um sustainable and i wasn't have to recycle a lot but also were not made from like a lot of chemicals and things like that so that's way more but still even in that category there was a lot yeah. that i waded through um and then i needed it in the uk because i didn't want to pay shipping from the u.s so there are just think of yourself as a consumer and how you shop because that is what helped us make this decision because i thought well i know i've just been going looking for you know these certain things and these were my decisions i made in it and mm -hmm. what would that look like um and then see what other people are doing i don't mean go out and copy what they're doing mm -mm. but see what other people are doing um and so for us like we sell a lot of stuff on etsy um, and it was interesting to just do some base research and understand SEO and stuff like that for like printable advent calendars. Now ours is different than what else is out there. Um, I mean, people are doing semi-similar, but not the same thing as us. And so, um, yeah, I think that's important. And then listen to what your customers say. So we, year after year, ours has always had like the date on one side with a Bible verse to reflect on that day. And then on the opposite side has had a family activity or I say family, it could be like you could do it as a couple yeah. or something like that. An activity to do that day to like with others, with basically. others to have yeah. like a memory or something like that. 
Um, and we had a lot of people say, I absolutely love these, but I have a friend or a family member I'd love to give this to, and they don't, they probably won't engage with Bible verses. Um, do you have one without Bible verses? And we never wanted to have two sets of prints like that and have the inventory in stock. And so we always just said, no, sorry. Or this year now with the downloadable one, mm -hmm. we can offer the two. Um, and that just took a little bit of work on Pat's part to change it up a little bit like that so that we've got the two different options for people and whatever mm -hmm. they want to. Um, more of a reflective one with Bible verses or one that they just wanted the activities. Um, and so sometimes because you're changing that successful product, you're able to offer it in a different and new form in a way. Or, or, multiple, or versions. multiple versions. Multiple yeah. versions, yeah, variations. And having variations is great. Um, I know for some of our friends that did the ornament, going back to the ornament thing, if you have a supply issue, it maybe you have to stop selling that for a little bit. Mm. Um, or they painted on more like um, ceramic ornament bobble type of things. And a couple of them switched to doing it on wood because they were able to get the wood ones. Um, so it can be something as simple as that of making a, um, you know, like a, a change in that. Um, I think the thing we have learned over and over is don't wait till the last minute to find that stuff out because it's really yeah. hard if you find out, you know, in October that you can't get the supplies you need for something you're hoping to launch November 1st for Christmas or something. Um, you really do have to think of Christmas. I'm, I'm using that as an example, Christmas or Mother's Day or whatever it may mm -hmm. be, wedding season. Um, Multiple months in advance. Yeah, you got to think of it a lot in advance because then you can try and get the supplies earlier. And then if you realize you can't get them, you can rethink um, what it may be like. Um, I know there's somebody who I buy her planner every year and it's like a journal planner thing. Um, and they've had an issue with printing and when they thought they were going to get it. And so for those of us that ordered it early, they have given us like the first few months, it's as a digital download to be able to do at the beginning of the year and that kind of thing. And so those are like creative ideas that mm -hmm. you can think of when something happens that is out of your control like that, that you can offer your consumers and your customers things in order for them to, like I said, we would send like half the month to people as a download last year because mm -hmm. they didn't have the physical one yet. Um, if a challenge comes, <laughs> Come up with a solution to still make mm -hmm. sure that your customers feel like you're seeing them. You know it's a challenge. Communicate ahead of time that you realize it's a challenge instead of them finding out yeah, um, and that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, if you have a successful product and you need to rethink it, first of all, it's okay. That's completely mm -hmm. normal. Um, you know, for Pat, we had the vinyl records that you hand-painted. Yeah. Um, and they blew up one Christmas. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the worst Christmases we've had, <laughs> not financially, just stress wise, but stress and wise, and, all and everything. Kind of all Pat did was paint Non -stop. all the time. Yeah. Um, we had other things going on, so he couldn't do it all the time. It was just him painting twenty four seven to get things out in time for Christmas. Um, we were underpricing them mm -hmm. um, and that kind of thing. And those are things you learn. That's part of being in business. You learn from the things that don't go quite well. You learn from the things that do go well. And so we would have considered that a very successful product, except for because if someone just looked at the sales of it, <clears throat> they would have said that's a successful product. And so you need to personally find out for your business mm -hmm. If it is successful, meaning like if I add up all my time, if I add up with the product costs, if I add up the shipping or the the number of like emails I've had to field because of whatever may be happening with it and that kind of thing, that's going to determine to you whether it's successful mm -hmm. or not. And that's going to look different for everybody. Yeah. Um, but I think that is something to when we say successful product, it does not always just mean lots of sales because you can have lots of sales and it'd be super stressful. Um, or it actually in the end not actually make you money because you have spent so much time on it and that kind of like, I think when we added up your time oh, was, with those vinyl we're, records we're like oh my gosh any money. he was barely making minimum wage on making those records which we realized like that's that's not, it's not sustainable not sustainable no. um, and so that's important I mean we could do a whole other thing on pricing but mm -hmm. that's how you determine things um, and again it, I think may that's first, too, I mean, it may be for a season that something Yeah, is. and thinking like, just even mm -hmm. for that example, like, yeah, the, the idea of that being a successful product or whatever at Christmas, but on the, on, you know, your side of things, it was the most stressful 
season ever. So like thinking about that, what what can change next year? Do you have to tweak something with your product Mm -hmm. for that next season and all that kind of stuff and just thinking about that kind of stuff. So again, just constantly learning about what is happening in your business and what specifically your audience is desiring and needing um, is just super helpful to always continue to evaluate and look at um, as well as how are you spending your time with those things. So. Yeah, and and again, I think if you if you watch other businesses that you admire too, um, and again, it's not copying them, but it's just watching what they're doing. We have a print hanging up in our house now that we've wanted forever that they didn't ship internationally, and so it's always something we've wanted. And mm. I've always been like, I guess we'll order it when we're in the states, but then that never worked out. Um, and then all of a sudden, they started for if you went on their website from an international like address IP, I think it's how it works. <laughs> um, something popped up when I was on there one time and it was saying new for international um, people that they had certain ones, their most popular prints were now that you could download and print. I was like, oh my gosh, that's brilliant. Um, And so that again helped us think of like that happened earlier in the year. I was like, I wonder if we could offer our advent calendar as a printable. Again, I'm not doing the same thing they're doing. However, it's like taking that idea and watching what some other people are doing because they may, there is always gonna be business that's ahead of the curve. Um, for you that you can be like, oh, like that was a really good solution to maybe what they were having Mm -hmm. an issue with. And so, um, and ask other business owners too, like Mm -hmm. ask people like, hey, you know, I have this thing. Do you have any ideas and stuff like that? How I could take this successful product and do it in a different way or that kind of thing. And then really do go back and look at your numbers, especially after a holiday season Mm -hmm. to say like, you may think just because you had lots and like we said, lots and lots of sales, that that was super successful, but then you need to go back and figure out all of your costs involved of it, including your time. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's everything from creating it to packaging it to getting it to ship and all that stuff. Um, and so really look at those things and mm-hmm. see, because then you're going to make a decision moving forward. Do I want to do this product again? And it's okay to retire a successful product. Mm, um, yeah. I know there are some places that we, you know, look to or we've gotten some stuff for our home and things like that. I mean, I'm looking at our stockings actually that are behind right now because it's Christmas season. We have them up, um, and that seller was selling them like hotcakes, and they don't. Their shop isn't even around anymore because she now sells something different. But I remember when we had our third child, I reached out yeah. and was like, I know you don't sell these anymore. And she's like, I just happened to have one in storage. Otherwise, I would have said no um, and was able to ship us another one. But that's just something to realize. Like, this is normal. Mm-hmm. That's a normal part of business. And as a creative business, um, there will be turnover in products and things that, yeah, just change. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's part of it. But it's really hard to let go of something maybe that, yeah, <laughs> was like yeah. the thing for so long. Um, but you never know what's on the other side of it if you tra- try to change things up. And yeah. it may take a couple seasons for people to catch on to you changing it. And that's yeah. okay too. I think mm-hmm. that's going to be the case for ours. And yeah, that's okay. For sure. That's all right. We're, we're okay with it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. <laughs> so yeah, we hope yeah. that encourages you if you are looking at a product that you have that has been pretty successful and whatever your definition is of that um, and you're thinking of changing it or rethinking it in a new way, um, that it's okay to be looking at that in a different way. And um, I, so, I mean, we're just start. I'm just started the Christmas season, but I feel less stressed right now. <laughs> Do you with that? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So far. Yeah. Um, there are other things that are creating stress. Well, sure. There, there probably always will be a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Yeah. But if that had been come out in combination with us doing all the stuff with the Apple yeah, calendar that's true. Yeah. and figuring out the shipping issues right now, I think that would be extra stressful. So, um, yeah. So we hope that's helpful. We'd love to hear from you guys. Are there things that you want to know about your creative business or um, things that would be helpful, uh, or questions you have and that kind of stuff, or maybe a roadblock you're coming up with that mm. you're trying to figure out in your business? We'd love to help you um, try and unpack that a little bit. So send us an email, reach out to us on social media, whatever it may be. Um, you can find all things Laurent Collective at laurentcollectivelearning.com. And please, it would be amazing and helpful for us if you subscribe to our YouTube channel or on the way that you listen to podcasts, Spotify, Apple, whatever it may be, um, that you rank us and stuff like that and subscribe there too because it helps other people find us and hopefully this will be helpful to other people in business and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah, thanks for tuning awesome. in. Thank you. Bye. Bye.